Shepsu Anki and Onke Art in Purpim Heruneter Ketet Shepsu Anki and Onke Ser ma keruin hete shepsu onki nonke aten perfim heru nete. Ketet Shepsu Onki and Onke Nukaser Makeruin Etet Shepsu Atin perfim heruneter ketet shepsu Ser ma keruin ete nacharak she pot chipsu pot nacharak tin pot chipsu give thanks blessings and love. our enlightened ancestors by God we give thanks for all the guidance and clearing of our blockages and opening of our way to our divine destiny by God in happiness and strength and health and wisdom and abundance and blessings one love I am Anebana Tafari, that is Abba Ras, Anebana Tafari, and I'm one half of the dynamic duo of Spiritual Alignment, Health, and Wellness, LLC, other half being my queen, wife, and partner, Emperor Shirley J. Stevens. We are appearing here today on the uh, Spiritual Guidance Academy channel. Blessings and love to Nicole for, you know, supporting our vibe here and pushing us forward. If you'd like to book a reading with um, either I or Shirley, you can contact us at... Abba, A B B A, period A N E B A N A, period T A F A R I 3797 at gmail.com. Or you can contact Emperor Shirley as well at counselor1753 at gmail.com. You can also reach us at our Facebook page at Spiritual Alignment Health and Wellness LLC. Please do like, share, and subscribe profusely, abundantly, and with love. By golly. Today, 
gonna go over a little bit of a uh, tree of life teachings, comedic tree of life. That's ancient Egyptian to those who are into the Egyptology. But mind you, the ancient ones call themselves Kmitans or Kamau. And this is significant because that meant translated God man. So it points to the awareness of once and once at that time to this time of the unity of the creator with his creation and with we as, as beings manifestations of said creator extensions of the one to the degree that we are open aware and allowing then and cultivating it I would say that in whatever manner that ones may do that be it Qigong or Kung Fu or Capoeira or Nayabingi drum as it is for the Rasta and meditation prayer cultivate and raise uh, one and one's energy to higher vibration to realize and actualize I would say the true human potential as it were which is divine alrighty that being said let's go over really briefly I say briefly because this information is vast and so I wouldn't be able to cover that in time a lot it's so I'm going to go over it as quickly as possible All right, here, I'm going to hold this up for the ones and ones to see, it is a tree of life, it is a comedic tree of life, there we go, we make sight from the top there is zero, all the way to the top here, and then we go from zero to one, two, three, four, five, Four, six, five, seven, eight, nine, and then ten. All right, and that is this is what we would call up here zero, which isn't really a zero but a circle. Amen is what that is called, or non-manifest, if you if you would. It's where it's not things, but yet they're still being. Quite quite simply pure consciousness, creator consciousness, enlightened consciousness, all right, there we go, God, as some would say, God Almighty, all right, now, as you go down this tree of life, there are committed sight up that these were, quote unquote, aspects of our being of our and also of our creative uh or spiritual uh, potential and actual the actual positioning uh, as far as what we're here to really manifest and know and knowing ourselves would be knowing all these different aspects and parts of ourselves which later on became quote unquote mostly through westernized interpretation gods and goddesses in that sense of things but in the beginning we knew these manifestations of beings that one would also know as the Risha and so forth as ones that enlightened to certain levels of divinity while on earth so when they passed forward they were you know basically installed into the celestial into celestial heights and, and as part of the hierarchy and there we go of heaven all right so i'm gonna go from the top 
down to here, earth, tent, and the explanation of each of the different um, aspects or the two different spheres that they're called. You see those different points are what we call spheres on the tree of life. All right. At the just underneath our men. In fact, we'll go into our man first. The being, the living of the knowledge of the essential and original unconditioned state of our spirit is a fundamental prerequisite for achieving success in all of our undertakings. The realization of this goal is the ability to maintain a state of deep inner peace that cannot be upset by externals. This condition is called Hatep. Realization of this knowledge is the final goal of life. So we'll cite that our man, as I was talking about that pure consciousness and being in tune, aligned, allows us to manifest, as it were, um, the next life or the next sphere on the tree of life, which is, is boom, there we go. All right, in the uh, Kemetic tradition, this would be Osir. In Yoruba tradition, this would be Obatala or Kandable, Oshala. And governs the head. Each of these different aspects also govern different aspects of the uh, physical body, both physically and as well as meta. Physically, which is a symbolic of a spiritual aspect of self. The head in this particular case governing. Being the head. It's this particular energy. Christ consciousness. Even this would say the unified being. That's unified and aware and actualized. Realizing their godhood, divinity and actualized in that. Dig it? All right. That's the top, right underneath, just underneath the uh, underneath our men. All right, so that's all Sarah. Again, if you might remember from an earlier video, all Sarah. That's a comedic word. All Sarah, not Osiris. That's a Greek word. Why would I call one of my spiritual beings? indigenous African that I am a Greek word so that's being all there that being said we'll keep going forward whose queen which we'll get to closer to the end is all set notice the similarities in their name even though they're in he's at the top and she's closer to the bottom of the tree of life and reality that those energies are, are uh, innately, intrinsically intertwined. If you want to look at that as the uh, prim primal yin and yang of things, or the masculine and female. There you go. But we'll go into that further in a moment, in a little bit. All right. The second spear on that tree of life. Note there's a little insignia sign symbol there in the corner. That's Jupiter, by golly, and this is the Houthi. In the Greek, it would have been Thoth, but that's the Greek. We're dealing with African in reality. So here we go. This is the Houthi. Wisdom, by golly. It also meant he who has a double measure, the ability to weigh one thing against another so to speak and reason and making a decision and to intuit the wise path the divine wisdom and path to go that's jupiter Dehuti, that's at the top or wisdom uh hukma in hebrew that would be in the tree of life this would be um, in yoruba A 
Romola, Ifa, Romola, in, in the Yoruba tradition, wisdom, all the same. Next in line on that in that tree of life in that top trinity there is Sekert. Sekert is you can see the signia in the back in the corner here is that's the that's the symbol for Saturn or Saturn energy. Sekert. That governs, like you would symbolically see, one of the uh, depictions of Sekert is with a bone, with a necklace of 50 skulls, which are symbolic of the 50 units of vibratory power or frequential frequency power. So that would be governed by this particular aspect, which is also the aspect that understands um, time and timing and limitation in the universe uh, the need for a certain you know limitation or disciplines at a certain point in in the universe structure so this energy first tune into this particular energy they would uh be able to intuit plans for for things whatever they might be focused on well so that's that that particular aspect and then we would use that in life for for planning Obviously, right? All right. Notice there's a number at the bottom of all these cards, too. That's the spear on the tree of life where it sits. See that four on the bottom, and then the corner again is Jupiter. So this is energy of Sharon. This is my eye. And you might note she has a scale there. Let me get a little closer. And on the right side of that scale is the feather of the famous feather of my eye. And on the other side is a heart, it's symbolic of a heart pot, which is what they call when they when they uh, they tuned ones they had different canopic jars, a canopic jar contain, containing a uh, heart, and that heart is being weighed against the feather of my eye. And as the, this is this was done meditationally, and it's still done meditationally within the framework of certain. Uh, spiritual practice such as all Sarah said, which is where I learned a lot of this and practice a lot of this information and vibes. Uh, real things you ever been if you ever been to all Sarah said ceremonies, uh, some powerful manifestation of spirits have happened there of the Almighty scene. Alright, so there you go. That is my art Jupiter energy very expansive one love when we think of one love that is my eye she's also divine law which again one love think on that and my eye her energy was such as how it was described to me my eye understands generosity and abundance to such a high high degree and is that to such a high degree that that energy that we know of as sharing which is interestingly close to her word of power, sharing. Sounds like sharing the word in English. She shares innately and naturally and is, is blessed and generous because she realized that it's all one. She's very close in that, again, that top three uh, trinity and the tree of life. And so in knowing that unity deeply and intimately, understanding it, then it's just to give to any other quote unquote other being would in reality be like taking a dollar from your right pocket and putting it in your left pocket. And that's how my Abba looked at thus there's generosity and abundance and again divine law. Now from there, we go to the fifth spirit. And from divine law, then we go to Harukahuti in Yoruba Ogun. Each of these particular energies also, of course, have words, power, and so forth. Uh, and this is the system, one of the systems that we use to uh, do counsel and guidance. These particular cards that I'm using are from that Medunitaire Oracle. 
divination tool. Uh, this is Huti or Agun, as I was saying, is, is dynamic action. Understanding of abstracts is also the spiritual abstracts is this particular energy. Mars is also detachment is and inherent in this energy. It is said that Ogun or Rukahuti always see the machete in his hand there. It's, it's so he can cut his own head off, so to speak, which is said to be detached. It's a strong quality of Ogun. Um, this energy is very high and people, bravery is also one of the things that is innately connected with that energy. Um, people that do dangerous jobs have a lot of this particular kind of energy, generally like firemen, people that go running into burning buildings, it's brave people um, have the, a lot of this energy. Also, some cops also have a lot of this energy. I would say some of them to the negative, unfortunately, <laughs> but it is what it is in this time. Um, so there we go. That is Haruka Hudi Ogun and in, in context to what the previous card, Ma'at on the Tree of Life, which was the law, is being dynamic action and also the implementation, implementation of that said law. Justice, in other words, the implementation of just the actual act. Law comes from Ma'at. The act of justice comes from Ogun. He also owed. Oh, Interestingly enough, Ogun or Haruka Huti governs accidents, which is to say, oh wait, do you mean the accidents are divinely governed? That means that not they're not really accidents, are they? They're part of manifestation of justice, karma, might even some people might even call that. Boom. Next in line, by golly, is the sixth sphere on the tree of life, and this is Haru Haru. Shango in Yoruba tradition, the heart, the will, divine will, cultivation of this particular energy will, you know, give, I said that, will give one the ability to will into the existence that which one wishes to be from the Amen into this physical manifestation. The proverbial son of Osair and Osset, which we'll get into Osset in a little bit here, or the son of God and goddess, actually, not just God, goddess. Cause there you go. That being Haru or Shango again. Ra, Ra, that being his words of power. Remember that picture of the hawk head for clarity. That's also what the hawk is symbolic of clarity. Seven spear is Het Haru. Notice Haru is in this name. Het means seat. And Haru, again, is that divine will faculty. So Het Haru or Venus, you see the Venus in the uh, top right corner there is the astrological sign for Venus. She governs uh, magic, spiritual or, or creative visualization. And Het Haru or seat of the will means it means seat of the will because through creative visualization and raising of the life force energy through such practices as Tantra, Yoga, one is able to manifest. Heteru Oshun is also very much Venus, like we were speaking of earlier. So that's that creativity as well as fertility, so to speak. She makes sure that a woman, this energy would be the energy a woman would need to have in a balance in order to uh, conceive a child. By God, fertility. And again, head to root, seat of the will. So, very important you being able to utilize our feelings and emotions is also part of that in tandem with visualization to 
manifest our will to seat our will and to manifest things in our life. That was Spear 7. This would be, on the Tree of Life, Spear 8. This would be Sevek, Legwa, Eshu, in the Yoruba tradition. Mercury, governor of the crossroads. And you see the Mercury symbol there in the top right corner is the little crescent. There's a, Actually, what that is supposed to be is a crescent on the top of that circle there which is symbolic of the mind. Notice it's like the sun symbol that we saw with the uh, Haru, which is the sun. Symbolic is there, is the sun right there at the top. And then that symbolic is self or mind. And then over that is a moon. So, matter or matter rather, pardon me. And so that moon over the top of that head is symbolic of mind over matter. Now, this energy is very important as well as energy is the energy that ones and ones need when we're at different crossroads situations or decision points in our life. Um, it sits in the body. And pardon if I haven't gone over that information for each of these, because like I said, there's a lot of information I can't go over at all in this one video. Um, he sits at the neck, at the crossroads of the body, because at this particular crossroad, after the heart chakra, all our higher chakras or higher powers are beginning to manifest then. You see? And this particular energy is dealing with alignment of the belief system with divine truth it's also another name for sebek is apawat in haru or opener of the way because he deals crucially with being in alignment with the most high to all set Gimaya in the Yoruba tradition. You might cite at the very, you see here, the guy with the, the little baby with the red and white hat is a baby, Haru, who she birthed from Aser, who was, who was the son of Aser and Aset. Gimaya, the divine mother. The great waters, primordial waters, the ocean, she symbolizes, is symbolized by and governs the big, big waters, the deep, deep unconsciousness. She governs meditation. And she is at the root of the tree of life. By golly, because devotion, she is the aspect of self that devotes to the knowledge and actualization, or pardon me, realization and actualization of the knowledge, the true knowledge of divinity of self, of the divine nature of self, of one's being, the true nature is of the divine. And we get there through the cultivation of our meditation and devotion to truth and alignment to said. She governs all as well. Very crucial. Trance. Meditation and trance. Specifically the ability to trance and put in suggestions, impressions of our own rather than it happening haphazardly. Alrighty. And then the very last. Note the big difference there. She governs. Like I said, again, meditation. And on the physical level, she would govern like the, the womb. So whereas Heru governs uh, fertility, Yimiya Oset governs the actual carrying of the child for the nine months and being the mother for the time of the child's life and so forth. Dig it. All the way to the bottom 10, which is Geb. Earth, Malkuth in Hebrew, which means 
God's seat or God's kingdom, earth. Physical manifestation that deals with this particular aspect of the tree of life deals with the physical health and aligning the physical body with the divine laws for it, eating healthy and sleeping healthy and breathing healthy and um, thinking good thoughts and doing good things towards one another is how we have health. It's not just in, you know, diet and what we breathe in, but also how we think and act affects our health. So there you have it. There's our tr little short tree of life. Um, lesson and vibe. Hope ones and ones enjoyed it. Again, if you want to book a reading, contact us at those earlier given contact points. Peace and blessings.